So this video is gonna be a quick look at a pen called the Jinhao 159. I believe they sometimes call it the general, but it's basically uh, the company's take on the Mont Blanc 146, which is their Le Grand or their very, very large fountain pen and rollerball set. Uh, that set and even its refills in the case of the rollerball are very difficult to use and they're very expensive so uh jinhao has a obviously less expensive variant of it you could buy this pen online for i don't know maybe six seven dollars ten dollars something like that pretty pretty cheap not that hard to find uh and it'll be shipped right to your door for less than the price of a mont Blanc refill and uh, it takes a lot of the design cues from the mont Blanc series but it uh, does obviously make some changes to it and really greatly reduces the price. This is sold in a fountain pen and a rollerball. Obviously, this is the rollerball. I bought this because Mont Blanc makes Le Grand rollerball refills. They're very large refills, much larger than a standard rollerball refill, a standard, you know, European standard refill. And they really only fit, fit in that set of Mont Blanc pens, like that 146 or... I think it's 146 or 147 or something like that rollerball and uh they won't fit in anything else <clears throat> so i was looking for a cheaper way to use those refills and i stumbled on this pen which is uh again sort of a uh, i hesitate to call it a clone because it's quite different than the uh the uh, legrand series but it's definitely inspired by it so what we see is a larger pen obviously uh torpedo shaped wide in the center and it gets narrower as you uh, go out. Kind of looks like a, a submarine there. Uh, the clip has a little logo there. You can't really make out what it is. I would imagine it's Jin Hao's logo, but I don't don't know what it is. It's, it's not a very nice clip. You can see it's just uh, stamped metal. The body is some sort of resin, some sort of plastic, I would say. You see a little cap band here. It says Jin Hao, some metal work, more metal work. This piece doesn't come off. It's just a plain finial. Twists to open. See a uh, sort of classic rollerball style grip. Not very large. The grip is a little bit over half an inch. And then uh, an extended writing tip. Again, quite long, pretty plain. And then a threaded section right here. Pretty small step to the threading, but you could definitely feel it. And then a small step here. Uh, that you can't really feel as much. So pretty nice job there. Short, fat body, another short top, and uh, that's the pen. It's definitely a kind of a bulbous pen. Aesthetically, I would say it's, uh, for me, not very good looking, but uh, that sort of Legrand series is not my favorite. It's more that I like the refills in them. And it was more of a quest to get myself using one of the refills than it was actually because I think they're the best refills or something like that pen itself is uh it's definitely a large pen so we have one two sorry one two three four five and a half inches almost six inches uncapped it's uh it's not that big now because it's one two three four five inches but this section from the actual body back is quite short and the grip area is very small. So you have a good sized pen, but by the time you uncap it, it's uh, actually not a very large pen at all, but it gets quite wide in the middle. This long front piece really takes up a lot of the size of the pen and you're left holding just this pretty small area here. It's not uncomfortable, but when you see a, a very large pen like this and then the actual functional area of it is right here uh just a fraction of the length of the pen you have to ask yourself you know kind of what happened here's the pen relative to a uh kind of a standard schneider and then here's a sharpie s gel the metal s gel uh and the sharpie is longer than this pen and then here it is if you were to be using it you can see the sharpie's longer and the grip length is, uh, you know, about twice that black area. So 
It's just an interesting trade-off that you have such a large pen and such a small grip area. It's kind of uh, something I've been thinking about and has held me back from using it a whole lot. Like I said, screw-on body, and then all plastic inside, nothing really to speak of there. This piece unscrews, and you'll see that the refill comes with it. And that's because some of the high-end Mont Blancs, they use a refill that screws into the section, and that's mimicked here or copied here or used here, whatever you want to call it, in this metal Jinhao refill. Uh, it just says refill there. Uh, really nothing interesting here, nothing about, oh, 0.7 millimeter, there it is. So you unscrew this piece from the grip section. You can see it has that threading there. And the refill is not quite as wide as a Mont Blanc Le Grand, but it's pretty similar to it. That one does have that threading here as well. And that is generally used with some pens. Uh, sometimes you'll see this and it won't be used, but in this case it is definitely used because you can see here it has to get, the writing tip is not there until you thread it and now it's fully seated. Fit and finish on the pen are surprisingly good. Everything goes together really well. It's uh, nicely, nicely made. The main look, uh, assuming you're okay with the aesthetics, where it's kind of wide and, and really have that heavy taper. If you're okay with that, then I would say the main downside of the exterior is the clip, which really looks like they just saved money by putting a really kind of cheap looking clip on it. It just looks like a, a really plain piece of stamped metal. That's not really in keeping with the rest of the pen, which looks to be of much higher quality. The pen is an okay writer. I haven't been uh, blown away with it, but uh, as far as rollerball goes, rollerballs go, uh, it's fine. It's a little scratchy, could be smoother, and uh, could be quicker drying, but it's, a, uh, it's an okay black rollerball. I think what you're buying with this pen, honestly, is you're getting the body and the shape and the size and the look of a larger executive style pen and the, uh, the this Jinhao rollerball. It's fine, it's not terrible, but it's uh, pretty slow to dry and it is not quite as smooth. You know, when you have a big rollerball like this, generally what you're doing or what people are doing is you're trying to get a more practical or more easy to use everyday version of a large kind of signature type fountain pen. And when you move over to the rollerball, there's the expectation that it's gonna be large writing wet rollerball that feels a lot like a fountain pen. It has fountain pen-like smoothness. Uh, you just don't have to worry about kind of the filling and the cleaning and all the fiddly bits of a fountain pen, because that's just not for everyone. Uh, but what they want, what most of these buyers want, is a big kind of pen with a very smooth, inky flow. And that's kind of not really what you get here. You know, I think they should have went with a 1.0 millimeter refill. Could have been putting down more ink and it could have been a whole lot smoother. This refill is just, it's, it's just fine. It doesn't write as well as a, uh, as that Sharpie uh, we talked about before. That, that's a gel, but it doesn't even write as well as, say, the uh, Sharpie Rollerball 0.7 millimeter. And, you know, interestingly enough, the pens are like, this is only slightly cheaper than the Jin Hao uh, because of just how the pricing dynamics work of Sharpie versus uh, one of these Chinese companies like Jin Hao. But this pen is almost as smooth in this size as the Jin Hao is. So it's kind of just disappointing, I guess. They could have, they mimicked the body, but they didn't go ahead or they couldn't go ahead and copy the smooth writing of uh, what you want from that rollerball. Anyway, if you're looking for a large signature type or executive type pen with a large body and that sort of kind of executive shape or whatever you want to call it, kind of like sitting behind behind your leather covered desk, you know, scratching off a signature once or twice a day, then uh, this is sort of that look of that pen, but it doesn't really have the feel or the performance of one of those pens. So it's an interesting purchase, not really my favorite and not really a pen that I would buy again, but 
if you're looking for a place to go to find that Legrand type of body and start cheap without having to start at eight or nine hundred dollar pen, there's just not a lot of options. So uh, it's cool that they did this, and I was interested to pick it up just because it's just a different mode of pen than uh, what I typically buy. So thanks for watching.